You're watching part two of the do-it-yourself towfish build. In this episode, we're going to be putting together the transducer and the mounting brackets that hold the cable that goes up to the boat. If you haven't seen part one, it describes how I build the body. And if you like this kind of video and want to see more and want to see how this do-it-yourself towfish works, please subscribe, like the video, shoot me some comments on what you think of it, and let's get started. You're watching CSD Solutions. Made a template where the holes are on the transducer. It's just a normal bracket that's used, transom mount bracket. So to do my sizing for where it's going to go, I made this simple cutout. I've got this scrap piece of wood laying around, and I just happen to be just the right size. I just got to make it a little narrower, and this will be my template for manipulating the PVC pipe to fit a concave section for the transducer. All right, so I made this real, real, real rough analog of this I can use to uh, push into the PVC. Not knowing where the center of gravity is going to be because I don't have the weight in the nose of the towfish yet, I'm going to just guess where I want this transducer to be. I want it kind of in the middle of this open section. I don't want it back here because these may interfere with the signal, the sonar signal, so I can't be back there. You want it as close to the pivot point as possible so that when it's in the water, if it's wiggling like this, the closer it is to the, to the pivot point, the less the wiggle will be. If it's further back here, it'll wiggle more. So I'm going to guess somewhere in here is probably where I want it to be. I need a little bit of space up here to add weight. So I got to leave a little bit of space there. I did buy a nose cone in place of this that allowed me to extend this out a bit. I think it goes to like a model rocket for a three inch pipe. So if that fits, then I can replace this uh, cap with an actual point of your nose cone that would bring my weight out a little bit and it'll help lengthen this thing just a bit but for now I think I'm going to put this transducer right about here it's uh, basically if I got a good gap here and a good gap here when I go to bend this if there's a some you know tapering it won't interfere with this or that so that's that's the idea it's a couple different things going on where I decided to put this thing so we'll see if it works out so the next thing I need to figure out is how long this piece is going to be. So I've got roughly, this will come in at most two inches. So backing off two inches, got around 13 inches of room. So I guess I'm just going to go with 12 inches, nice round number. So make that board one foot long and then fit it in. Doesn't have to be exact, I don't think. It's just the number I pull out of my ass, basically. I'm going to use this piece of one by two to figure my, my height out. I, I measured the height of the transducer. It's about an inch and a quarter or so. Got to leave some room for the width of that. So this is actual length is an inch and a half, which is about right. So I figured that's about the height I want this bottom plane. So laying this on the ground is the easiest way I thought of to figure out where my floor would be. The bottom of that PVC basically will melt up to that point, roughly. Um, actually, it'd be a little bit lower, it'd be like down here. But this is where I wanna make, this is where I wanna figure that kind of cross beam support, inside support needs to be about that big. So I just line this 
piece of PVC board up, make a mark. So now I know how wide I want it to be. So I mark my line. Okay, so made my first cut. It's gonna need a little fine tuning. Not quite there, but I wanted it to be a bit big. I wanted to be able to sand it down. I went ahead and made another line on here just to give myself a point of reference so I don't go too much further than that. Got a little bit of a taper on that side, so I'll do the same to this side. Wouldn't say a perfect fit, but damn close. Look at that. So I decided I'm gonna make a little tool basically to uh, help level it. I'm gonna attach this stick to this piece. And then this is gonna go down inside the tube and allow me to lay it flat and, and use this to level this plane. So now I can use this surface to put a level on or an angle measuring, something to where I can make sure this thing is flat. Hey, so not bad. Pretty darn good. Should have just left it in place. Now that I have all the holes started, I can take this back plate off, put it back in. So something I needed to think through at this stage in the build is the weight. So you're gonna need probably some weight in the nose or just some weight in general, but you don't wanna put the weight at the tail. You, It's gonna have to be balanced. So I don't know how much weight I'll need to get it down where I need it to be. And I don't know where the weight will need to be or the, the connection point will need to be to make this thing ride level. So what I'm gonna do just for this testing purpose, I got these dive weight pouches 
and I'm just gonna stuff them in here. And that's a five pound weight bag, pouch. And then I can just cap it off and put two little uh, holder screws in there, set screws. And that'll hold that, that'll weight down the nose. And then I'll have my uh, eye bolt there. Hopefully that will work. I don't know if that's too heavy. Uh, or maybe I'll just start out with not as heavy because that's easier. And I'll just use a two pound weight pouch like that. And going like that. So that may work. I'm not entirely sure. So that's going to be a little bit of trial and error maybe. Also, maybe once I get the mounting points on here and the actual nose cone that I ordered, then I can adjust the weight in the nose cone just step by step until it rides level. That's maybe a way I could do it. I'm not 100% sure yet, so it's just thinking it through. So originally, I was going to use this heat gun, heat up the bottom, push this into it, and melt it. After thinking about it, I just don't think I'm going to be able to, if I even were to get this to melt properly, which I don't think I would get it to melt properly, I'm just not that good at melting PVC. Uh, I don't know that it would be flat, and I don't know how I would get the screws lined up and everything to put the transducer on. So being that I got this in there real nice and flat, I feel like I want to use that platform inside here to mount the transducer to. So, um, and because it just screws in, I can undo these screws and kind of rotate things around while the transducer's in there maybe to get the screws to go in um, to mount the transducer. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to, I am still going to use this block to kind of measure where, where I want to cut and uh, I'll go from there. So I've started the cutaway process. It's very rough right now, so I'm still working on it, but so far so good. Getting a little closer to where it needs to be. There I am, pretty much where I want to be with it. There's the sanded version. Used my template, made my marks. That's where the data cable's coming through. I'm gonna do some measurements, to make sure it's not crooked, and then drill the holes. So I went ahead and removed the piece. And uh, before I did, I marked where that about, I marked the area where that line's gonna come out. I wanna put it right in the center though. I also, while I have this out, I wanna go ahead and drill uh, a couple holes for the, the eye hoops that are going in. Let me show you those. So these are the eye bolts I got. And I got just two for now. And I'm going to put them you know, out the top. So I've cut this one foot piece of aluminum to go in here. This is where I think I'm going to put those two eye bolts. And that 
aluminum plate's going to provide rigidity so they're not bending and uh, warping the washer. So once it does that, it'll make it difficult to tighten it down with the socket. But with this plate, it's a nice flat surface for the washer and nut to mount onto. Uh, and so that way I can use a socket wrench and get it nice and tight. So now with those holes drills, I can mark where the eye bolt's gonna go. And I'll verify that it's lined up with those back there, just so it's in line. All right, so I've drilled the holes. And let's see how close I got. Mm. Not so good. To make some adjustments. All right, much better. All right, I got the eye bolts tightened down. Pretty good. Everything looks to be in alignment. Next step is going to be to reassemble this with the transducer inside. I can't simply just push this down in through. That would be too easy. So actually what I have to do is uh, slide this in and then install it on here. This has got to go in here first. So here's how it's going to sit in there. Cable okay, comes out the top. Now the challenge is I got to figure out how to get the screws in to mount that on there. So I can make it work. It's going to take some fussing. So to make my life easier, I went ahead and drilled access ports in the top so I can get to those screws. I tried to do it the other way and it was just not worth the hassle. Those little screws aren't gonna be easily accessed if I don't put these in there. So went ahead and didn't.
did it. Got everything fished back into place. So, not a big deal. I just got to screw that down again. All right, got it installed. Much easier with those access holes. I added a couple washers on uh, the top two there. I think it looks pretty good. I'm happy with it. So the last piece of the puzzle is going to be putting the nose cap on with the weights inside. And one thing I really like is the fact that when I lay this down on the boat or on the concrete, that transducer is going to be not touching. So that was part of the design that I was hoping was going to work out. And it looks like it did. Awesome. Here's what that looks like in reality. As you can see, that is touching there, but you got a good good amount of space. So you don't have to worry about scratching that up if you plop it in the boat. So here's what it ended up looking like. I was pretty happy with it. If you want to see what this thing can do, please subscribe to the channel. And I'll be posting videos showing you what it looks like in the water and what the ultimate sonar images look like. Probably do lots of testing, lots of reef mapping with it. Take it easy.